Good day, grade 9 learners, and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You are tuned into your fifth lesson of grade 9 EMS. In the last lesson, in lesson 4, we looked at the CPJ and the CRJ of a trading business. In this lesson, in lesson 5, we'll be looking at how you post the CRJ and the CPJ on the general ledger and how to balance the general ledger of a business. This lesson is going to work a bit different to the others. Because this lesson is a bit long, we'll split the lessons into two. For the first lesson, lesson 5.1, we'll be looking at how to post the CRJ on the general ledger. We'll look at lesson 5.2 a bit later. First, let's have a closer look at the general ledger. The general ledger has two main accounts. The first one is the balance sheet, and the second one is the nominal account. Let's have a closer look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet has the following accounts in it. Number one, equity accounts which is capital and drawings, number two, assets, number three, liabilities, and in the nominal account, number one, income accounts, and number two, expenses accounts. These accounts should be posted in this specific order. Can you still remember the acronym DALIC? This is the acronym we'll be using to realize which side the accounts will be decreasing and increasing, whether on the debit or the credit side. So in many schools, they might use a different acronym to measure the debit and the credit side. Now for you, if you're using something different, go ahead. But for today's lesson, we'll be using the Dalek acronym. All right, grade nine learners, this is very, very important. This is the fundamental of our lesson today. The Dalek acronym is what we'll be using and you must know it off by heart. The drawings, assets, expenses or losses increase on the debit side and decreases on the credit side, whereas liabilities, income, and capital increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I recommend that you pause, memorize this, and then move on. All right, so let's test this concept on a more practical way. Looking at the table behind me, the first account in the general ledger is capital. Capital increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. Remember, Dalik, the C, you will also post the balance on the plus side of the account, which is the credit side in capital's case. Drawings is the second account and increases on the debit side, the Dalik, the D in the acronym. In looking at the table once again, we have assets, which also increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. The last balance sheet account is liabilities. Liabilities increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. Next up, let's look at the nominal accounts. Income is first in line and increases on the credit side. The expenses are the last accounts of the general ledger and increase on the debit side. All right, did you get that? Let me say it one more time. Income is first in line and increases on the credit side. The expenses are the last accounts of the general ledger and increase on the debit side. Let's look at the very important accounting principle. This is the double entry principle. So for every one rand placed on the debit side of the general ledger, another one rand has to be put on the credit side of the general ledger. This is the double entry principle. The two sides must be the same when you add each side. The debit must equal the credit. This might seem a bit confusing at first, but at the end of this lesson, this will make all sense. So there is two golden rules when it comes to the general ledger. Number one, if it is a column total in the journal, you post the total on the last day of the month. Number two, if it is a sundry account in the journal, it is posted on the day that the transaction took place. Now learners, do you understand that? The first one is posted on the last day of the month. The second one is posted on the day, which is placed in the Sandri account. Okay, so now that we've looked at the theory, let's put this in practice. Now, if you're not so comfortable with the theory part, do yourself a favor and watch the start of this lesson again and be very comfortable with it. And I'm sure this will be very easy when we apply it into practice. Okay, grade nines, let's look at an example. On the 20th, a business purchased trading stock of 5,500 Rand by macro wholesalers and paid by EFT01. All right, 
So grade nines, you should be able to post this on the CPJ. We did that in the fourth lesson. Now we're gonna do something a bit different, which is completely new to you. We'll be posting this on the general ledger. Let's have a look at how this looks like. The bank column is credited with 5,500 Rand on the last day of the month. This is because it is a column total. It is the last day of the month. It is credited because bank is a current asset and it decreases. Money flows out of the business. The trading stock is debited because it is a column total and recorded on the last day of the month. The account is debited because it is an asset that increases. Can you see the double entry? The double entry principle is applied. For each entry on the debit side of an account, there's an entry on the credit side of the account. Bank is credited and trading stock is debited with the same amount. So grade nine learners, this is your first time doing this on the general ledger. Now, I wanna make sure that you understand this and know it off by heart. So let's go through it once again. The bank column is credited with 5,500 Rand on the last day of the month. This is because it is a column total. It is the last day of the month. It is credited because bank is a current asset and it decreases. Money flows out of the business. The trading stock is debited because it is a column total and recorded on the last day of the month. The account is debited because it is an asset that increases. All right, so let's look at a more difficult example. On the 31st, the following transaction took place. The business sold goods for cash for 4,500 Rand. The cost price was 3,000 Rand. Can you remember how to enter this transaction into the CRJ? Let's quickly give you a few seconds to think about it. If you're watching this in class and you know the next step, put up your hand and share with the class what you will be doing next. Three, two, one, let's go. All right, so the next step was to put this on the CRJ and this is what it would look like. So what we do now is we take this information and post it on the general ledger. Let's see how this will look like. Column totals are posted at the end of the month. The amount is debited because the bank is an asset that increases. Money flows into the business. We received the money. Trading stock is credited with the total of the cost of sales column in the CRJ. The account is credited because trading stock is an asset that decreases. Stock leaves the business. Let's look at this transaction one more time on the CRJ. Column totals are posted at the end of the month. The amount is debited because the bank is an asset that increases. Money flows into the business. We received the money. Trading stock is credited with the total of the cost of sales column in the CRJ. The account is credited because trading stock is an asset that decreases. Stock leaves the business. Sales is credited with the total of sales column on the last day of the month, column total. Sales is an income that increases owner's equity on the credit side. Cost of sales is debited with the total of the cost of sales at the end of the month or the column total. Cost of sales is an expense that decreases the owner's equity on the debit side. Okay, grade nines, I'm gonna leave this up. Take some time to reflect and understand why the amounts are placed in the columns that they are placed in. So grade nines, let's do an activity together. Kamva Makeba established Ikasi Kofu Company. At the end of June 2021, the following transactions took place. Capital for a 150,000 Rand. Trading stock for a 117,700 Rand. Bank, 59,300 Rand. Sales, 93,000 Rand. Cost of sales, 77,500 rand. Rent income, 50,000 rand. 
rent expenses 11,000 rand and wages 27,500 rand. So the instruction is open the accounts of the general ledger of Ikasi Kofu company, post the accounts on the general ledger and balance the general ledger. Good luck. The journals for August 2021 have been completed. The following information appeared on the CRJ and the CPJ. Remember in lesson 5.1, we'll be looking at the CRJ. In lesson 5.2, we'll be looking at the CPJ. So in this example, we'll be looking at the CRJ. The table behind me shows a typical case of the CRJ. Now remember, we've already looked at these examples previously, and this is how the table should look like. From now onwards, we'll be looking at this table and posting this on the general ledger. So where do we start? Start to bring down the balances on 1st August 2021. Remember Dalik? So capital will increase on the credit side, then apply your principles. Remember your two golden rules, namely column totals at the end of the month and sundry accounts on the day the transaction took place. Okay, the next account will be bank as there are no drawings and assets that should be posted after drawings. Bank is an asset and increases on the debit side of the T account. Let's bring down the balance. So learners, when I say bring down the balance, what I'm saying is take the amount on the CRJ and take it to the general ledger of the account. It is a column total, so you post the total at the end of the month. The 111,000 is all the money that we received in the month of August. Next is trading stock, which is also an asset. Bring down the balance on the debit side. The trading stock is credited because it is an asset that decreases. Stock leaves the business, you sold the stock. Sales is an income. So you should bring down the balance on the credit side. Sales is a column total. Post the total of sales at the end of the month. Next, let's look at cost of sales. Cost of sales is an expense, so the balance will be on the debit side. Cost of sales is debited because it is an expense that decreases owner's equity on the debit side. Rent income is an income, so you should bring down the balance on the credit side. It is a sundry account, so you post the amount on the transaction that took place on the 5th. Income increases on the owner's equity, and therefore the account is credited. Just a note, when you're posting the CRJ to the general ledger, you must post the folio numbers. For this shows that the amount was posted and then you will post the CRJ to the general ledger. That's it for lesson 5.1. In lesson 5.2, we'll be looking how to post the CPJ into the general ledger.